Oh, that over enthusiastic, over enthusiastic crowd just takes me away. Eh? They should have left that clip out of the back end of it, okay? Cause man, I was dancing on my hands. How about you, man? Doing handstands and you know twirling around on the ceiling and stuff, you know? Cause I was feeling that stuff that cross-eyed Mary was good old yes, row tall. Now I know a lot of folks think that's kind of tending towards heavy middle and satanic luciferian stuff but you guys are all just a bunch of little fear mongers afraid of your own little backside let alone anything you see in front of you man come on get off of it get out of it get on with it now here's a little metaphorical tale that help you feel it okay yeah, so you can deal with it a little better, man. You just you ain't been doing good enough. It's time to wise up, you know, and brighten up and show that you care, man. I don't care how cold you've been. You don't got to be cold no more. Just let your little heart warm you up and follow the flow of that generous heart of yours, don't you know? Yeah, see, so once upon a time, they're like these three bears, and they lived out in the woods, man. You know where the woods is? Well, it's right next door to me here and right next door to you, too. It's the wild places, okay? And that's where the bears normally like to play, but usually they like to live in caves and shite, you know. But in this case, these guys had decided, as a family, they'd had a little confab about it and had taken a vote and stuff. I mean, you know, we got to do it the uh, Turtle Island way, you know, independence and liberty for. Oh, anyway, the three bears, anyway. <laughs> yeah, baby. So they, you know, um, they commandeered this shack from this. Little old man, little old lady that had built that place and lived there for 20 years, man, you know, with no problems, you know. They even fed the bears every now and then when nobody was looking. Not so you could really tell, because if the bears thought they was being fed, well, mm -hmm. They kind of go out of their head and come after more, you know. <laughs> They're bottomless pits at certain times of the year, man. They're kind of dangerous when they are, you know. So you got to have yourself. You're going to live in a little shack out there in the woods. Just you and the little old lady. The kids all ran away. And I don't blame them either, man. But okay. Here's where the story really begins, see. Because, well. We don't know what happened to that little old man, little old lady. See, you gotta, you got to be in a good space, man. And apparently, they were getting old and a bit embittered toward each other, you know, as couples tend to do. Not in every case, thank goodness, but in a lot of them. And these two were, like, starting to grumble and mumble and call each other by foul names and stuff, you know. And just weren't, you know, behaving themselves in the way they should here in the third density, you know, with a, just a, a little bit of calm civility, you know, just a, a, a little bit. Well, anyway, they just weren't getting along, okay. And uh, the bears kind of sniffed it out, and they said, you know, I don't know, they were kind of educated bears. I think Baby Bear had been to Harvard already. I'm not sure, but, you know, could have been, could have been. But anyway, they kind of figured out, well, let's just go do them in. You know, get them out of there, and we'll live in their house for a while, man. Okay, that's what they did. Well, we're not sure, really. You know, they might just have scared them off, and, you know, they couldn't find their way out of the woods anymore. Well, anyway, you know, nature takes its course, baby, you know. And strangely, all the little chickens and hens, they so well protected through all those years were gone away, too, man. And there's these three bears, and... They're getting in the cupboards and discovering what's there. They even learned how to boil water and make mush and shit. You know what I mean? These were some pretty bright bears, man, you know. But long comes this little chicky honker got herself lost in the wood. Now, this wasn't no nine-year-old girl. This is like about, you know, an athletic, you know, outdoor-inclined girl, obviously, with Nike hiking boots on her feet or something like that. <laughs> They got to be just right, you know. It's the yuppie thing, man. So she's a yuppie chick, and she comes along and you know, shaking her golden hair and and um, dog on it. Comes over there, you know. She sees those bears living in the house and wearing Levi overalls and eating mush and stuff. And she goes, "Wow, man, the zoological apartment down in Berkeley is gonna love this shit. We gotta get some doctors and professors up here with photography equipment and and you know lots of long words to say and shit. And we'll study the hell out of this." 
the next thing you know, well, shit, that's what happens, man, you know. You just try to live a life that's a bit of a novelty, and the next thing you know, you're some kind of scientific anomaly, and there's, you know, not only Berkeley, but UCD and, and, and Stanford and, well, Harvard, and everybody's there, you know. It's just like, you know, what? Well, it's evolution amongst the bears. They're going to take over the planet, etc. You know, I mean, all kinds of visions and stories come out of it, you know. Mostly they're just some philosophical bunch of bullshit, but they're prevent, presented by the professorial types as rather, you know, factual, you know, even though it's just their own little fantasy. Well, I make it, you know, if the bear does, well, that must mean... They were tired of living in the city and rooting through garbage cans. They were seeing this, you know, better life, this more idealistic life all around them, man. So they just quite naturally gravitated back to their woods and, you know, lived happily ever after. As soon as they got rid of Grandma and Grandpa there, you know. (laughs) Oh, I think the Wicked Witch had something to do with all that, too. I'm not sure where the two stories intermingle, but they definitely do, man. You know, Dorothy and Toto and Goldilocks and the Little Red Riding Hood. No, that's the same chick. It's the same old story, just given in a different way, you know. Just like we gave you a little different dose of the three bears today. So you understand why you're surrounded by, you know, a bunch of BS. Because you just try to live at your best. You didn't mean to off anybody and take their stuff away from them. You're a bear. You don't know any better. That's food, man. <laughs> oh, darling. Won't it be grand when we finally can retire from that uncivil way of being and of having to knock each other off in order to have something to munch on? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Gag, 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 eh? Merry Christmas, okay? <laughs> Let's help each other along the way. Along with Goldie Rocks and Red Riding Hood and the Three Bears, man. Let's come out with something really auspicious out of this whole... Oh, and guess what? They didn't eat them anyway, man. That is all bullshit. You know, they hit them out. They build them a new place, man. They they, they just kind of swap places, you know. And, 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 and the old man and the old lady went to live in the cave, and guess what? They hibernated just like bears do, and now it's spring, and they're waking up, too, and they're hungry as all get out. So you better watch out. Now they might really resort to their carnivoric side. You, you know, you just never know, man, you know. So all them scientists, they get scared when shit like that's going down. So they don't hang around. They just leave their sneak cameras and recorders there, and their little bugs and stuff, you know. And get the hell out of there, you know. Do it remotely, because they don't want to get themselves offed. They're not very brilliant in the... After all, you know, they're just little scaredy cats, man. When the going gets good, they get gone, you know. Oh, there's an avalanche. Let's get out of here, baby. You know, scaredy cats. What's an avalanche going to do you but bury you up to your eyeballs and probably suffocate you? I mean, come on, man. What's there to be afraid of, you know? You're a resilient being, and, and, and you can live forever, man, even when you're dying, you're living, man, okay? So just understand there's nothing to be afraid of today on a trip Tuesday here on the Everclear Hazy Radio Network, dear, with your old friend, Grandpa Coyote, and our little friend, which is our brother, little big brand, Okiwong Kenobi, or Oki Homeboy, as we sometimes say. The old homeboy is here to help us all get along the way, uh, along with the likes of Joe Walsh today. I mean, don't you just love old Joe? I mean, some some artists and some artistry is just immemorial. I mean, you know, it just goes on. For, it just lasts forever. It can't be overdone or underdone or anything. It's just meant to be there and help us expand and grow beyond the limitations of life we so easily accepted before. We don't know mo now do we see like the three bears you know and you know, i mean everything has a happy ending in some way and so i mean you know we learn to cohabit and coexist in different ways and guess what the three bears and that old man that old lady they they started a new trend man you know house sharing it's called home sharing 
And so, you know, when you're a weird, whacked out, out kind of hippie-like folk that probably smoke a little Mary J, I'm sure that's what brought those bears along the way. You know, and Grandma and Grandpa, too, you know, because I'm sure they were faithful practitioners of the sacred herb. They had to be, man. How else you going to live out there? <laughs> It's beautiful for a while, but it's awful isolated, you know. And there's not much social life, you know. You have to go into Joe's Bar and Grill down there by the lumber mill, and, you know, that's where you get your thrill. But you can only do that maybe once or twice a year because it's such a distance, dear. I mean, it's a long way. Even when you just gallop all the way, it still takes about three days each way, you know. So, anyway... <laughs> So it became a new trend, man, you know, and everybody began to live everybody else's life, you know, and swap houses and swap other things, too. We won't go on to mention how far it went. But, man, you know, let's just say the scientific side was blown out of the water and they turned out to be just as human as the rest of us, don't you see? Oh, my goodness. Isn't life crazy in this 3D? <laughs> I, thought, I thought, too, babies. But you know what? It's something to live through. It's something to live by. It's something to, you know, tell yourself, you're going to get really, really high. Right here, right now, with Grandpa Coyote and Okiwan Kenobi and Sweet Mary Jane. Here at Spring Creek, man, you know, coming to you from Spaceship Love. Oh, well, babies, let me tell you.